October 5, 1967 Israel begins a six-day war against the Arab countries, explaining this by the desire to get ahead of the Arab attack. But the prerequisites for this were not only in religion. In 1964-67, the sharing of water resources was one of the most divisive issues. The situation was so acute that the Arab countries planned to move the headwaters of the Jordan River so that the water would not reach the Jews. In turn, Israel was aware of how important water is for the development of the state. The victory in the war and the capture of the Golan Heights allowed Israel to gain control of the Sea of Galilee and have access to its resources. Today, the conflict is frozen, but the problem of water is no longer an issue because Israel produces 20% more than it consumes. How did the country transform from a critically water-stressed nation to a prosperous water-abundant nation? Keep watching. As soon as Jewish settlers began to arrive in the territory of modern Israel in the early 20th century, it became clear that there was not enough water. 60% of Israel is classified as arid, the rest is semi-arid. It rains only in winter from November to March and mostly in the northern and western parts of the country. From April to the end of October, there is practically no precipitation throughout the country. Even before gaining independence, the Israelis created the future state company Mekarot and began to develop water supply according to a single principle, using the achievements of science and technology. Deep wells were drilled in mountain aquifers. Water was supplied through pipes under pressure, overcoming the differences in relief. For uninterrupted water supply, regardless of precipitation, a system of reservoirs as well as sprinkler irrigation was used. But the most revolutionary invention was drip irrigation created in the late 1950s by Simcha Blas, the former chief engineer of Mekarat, and further developed by his son Yeshayahu. In such a system, the right amount of water and nutrients are delivered directly to the roots of the plant using special pipes and droppers. A plant gets exactly when and what it needs for maximum growth. Water use efficiency is 95%. For comparison, conventional irrigation has an efficiency of 45%. If in 1964 about 80% of all water went to crop irrigation, then this figure dropped to 63% in 1997 as a result of drip irrigation. But even that was just the beginning. Immediately after gaining independence in 1948, Israel began to develop the National Water Carrier Project a grandiose infrastructure project that was supposed to deliver fresh water almost throughout the country. The National Water Carrier was created to transport water from Lake Kinneret, also known as the Sea of Galilee, and other water sources in the north to the arid regions in the south. In this way, a national water supply system could be created that would provide fresh water to all parts of Israel. The total length was 130 kilometers. During the construction of the National Water Carrier, 7 million cubic meters of soil were excavated. About 1.7 million cubic meters of rock were mined. 500,000 cubic meters of concrete were poured and 15,000 concrete and steel pipes were laid. It's not even the numbers that are more impressive, but the issues that they had to face as well as their solutions. For instance, the withdrawal of water from the Sea of Galilee required engineers to cut down a mountainside and install a pumping station in the vacated space. It pumps water through an underground pipe with 30,000 kilowatt pumps. Such incredible power is needed in order to raise water 250 meters up. Further, the water flows in an open channel and again enters the pumping station, which pumps at another 150 meters up. Often, the Mekharad engineers had to tunnel through the mountains to overcome uneven terrain and for crossings with other water sources, special U-shaped pipes were used, which worked according to the law of communicating vessels and allowed water to be transported. Sometimes the bend of such pipes was up to 150 meters. At the time of its opening in 1964, the National Water Carrier became the main supplier of water for agriculture as well as Israeli cities. Simultaneously with the opening of the National Water Carrier, another significant event took place, which went unnoticed but was of great importance in the future. 
1964, the first desalination plant opened in Eilat. The city is located in the very south of the country in a very arid climate, and the national water carrier did not reach there. Nevertheless, Eilat stood right on the Red Sea. First, water was desalinated at the station by freezing. Later, they switched to various distillation options. But the most effective method was reverse osmosis under pressure. Ultra-thin osmotic membranes and the process technology were developed by the American-Israeli scientist Sidney Loeb in the 1970s, who moved from the USA to the Negev and worked at Ben-Gurion University. From 1977 to 1997, reverse osmosis desalination plants operated in Eilat, but their capacities were used only to meet the needs of the city's residents. The country understood that it was impossible to simply increase consumption. It was necessary to change the approach to the efficiency of water use. Therefore, Israel began to actively use treated wastewater again. In 1969, a station was built for Tel Aviv, which treated about 130 million cubic meters of wastewater annually for use in agriculture. A year later, there was an outbreak of cholera due to the illegal irrigation of lettuce plantations with raw sewage. Since then, investments in wastewater treatment have increased. Today, Israel treats 86% of all its wastewater, that's 400 billion liters a year. What is more, about 230 reservoirs are used in the country for storing treated wastewater with their subsequent use in agriculture. For almost 30 years, Israel had enough water from the Sea of Galilee and underground aquifers. But in the second half of the 1990s, the country began to experience a shortage of this resource again. The reason was the growing consumption of water with an increase in population and living standards. And the drought of 1998 to 2002 intensified the effect. All this has led to a sharp decrease in the water level in the reservoirs and a shortage of half a billion cubic meters of water annually. Each news release in the country ended with up-to-date information about the water level in the Sea of Galilee. Israel realized that a new solution had to be found. First, measures were stepped up to reuse treated wastewater. In parallel, a social campaign was held to reduce consumption and efficiency of water use. But the main solution was desalination. First, in 1997, Israel's first full-fledged, high-capacity seawater desalination plant was launched in Eilat. But its capacity was still not enough in reference to the whole country. The drought prompted the government to take more decisive action, and between 2002 and 2009, several more plants with a total capacity of more than 300 million cubic meters of water are being opened in the country. So in 2013, the plan in Sorek was launched the pearl of Israeli hydraulic engineering. The initial capacity was 150 million cubic meters and was later expanded to 300 million. It is one of the five largest desalination plants in the world and the largest in the world to operate entirely based on reverse osmosis technology. What is the result? Today, about 60% of Israel's domestic water needs are met by desalination. Thanks to this dramatic change in freshwater sources, Israel's consumption of water from the Sea of Galilee has dropped from 500 million cubic meters in 2002 to just 25 million cubic meters in 2019. Moreover, due to the surplus, it became possible to supply desalinated water back to this reservoir, the level of which decreased during the drought of 1998 to 2002. But that's not all. Israel also uses the surplus of water to restore the levels of mountain aquifers, which are non-renewable. To do this, floodwaters, rainwater, and treated sewage are collected in reservoirs, which are then pumped into other special water bodies. More importantly, the process is very cheap and the pumping costs are $20 to $30 per 1,000 cubic meters. Thus, due to technology as well as rapid response to emerging challenges, and rational use of water. Israel was able to achieve an abundance of this vital resource. The country was able to ensure the availability of clean drinking water for its citizens, as well as sell it to neighbors. Today, Israel is the only country in the world where the desert is shrinking thanks to irrigation. And this does not lead to an ecological catastrophe as in other countries. And since many countries in the world are in a situation very similar to Israel, 
Perhaps they should learn and customize these methods, shouldn't they? 